Hello, welcome back. My name is Aladino and uh, together with my wife Maya we are restoring uh, Cape George Cutter 36. Recently we've had a bit of time pressure added on our schedule. Our beautiful enclosure has to come down because the yard wants to move us. Uh, they want to use uh, space more efficiently so yeah um, they want to relocate us but they can't with the shed around. So they have given us a month and in this month we uh, basically have to try to wrap up all exterior work since the boat is going to be in the elements afterwards. So we need to get all the exterior work done as soon as possible. In the last episode we started applying kiwi grip on the cabin top. I've never used kiwi grip before but I'm really happy with it. This episode our big shipment from Epifan has arrived, so that is the paint that we were waiting for that is going onto our decks after, uh, well, previously applying uh, their epoxy primer. I spent quite a while masking off the entire deck. Ta da da da! Real time emotions! Minutes before painting! Um, well, yeah, I am hella stressed. <laughs> uh, until the paint is on, um, yeah, I guess that's just how it is. Everything is prepped. Uh, it was a lot of sanding. Um, it also was an entire day of cleaning and taping. Uh, took quite a while. We put on the heaters, those are blasting at maximum capacity. Uh, conditions outside, of course, are not ideal. Uh, but what else is new? Uh, we're, just, we're just gonna do it, we have to. Um, surface temperature is about 10 degrees now. I'm hoping that it goes up a bit still. Um, I love painting in hot, 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 uh, because the paint sets much quicker and I prefer that over uh, having paint that can possibly uh, continue to sag down. But yeah, like I said, um, yeah, I feel very stressed before tackling it, uh, but we have prepared everything to the best. So to ease uh, the stress uh, is just putting it behind me. So we've got to start. Masking takes quite a long time and that is not just because um, of the size of the boat and because you have to do perimeters which always uh, are bigger uh, but it's also because there was uh, the design involved. You have to decide uh, how, how do we want to uh, break up the non-skid, uh, what do our patterns look like, uh, how wide do you want to have the tape lines, like all those things um, are a little harder to gauge when it's done with colorful tape. 
but yeah there is some rules around it just around some hardware sometimes uh, you don't want to go too wide with the frame with the white frame around it and in other places instead you want them to be a little wider where you divide the foredeck also the waterways next to the bulwarks um, those could be a little bit wider uh, than the rest there's endless patterns uh, and so yeah we just taped it up and when we were happy um, then uh, I cut the radiuses and there also you can decide uh, to go with a bigger radius or a smaller radius uh, so yeah we just did what we thought would look good I am a little worried about the temperatures for a painting task, but we do have a backup from heaters. Maybe we didn't plan this uh, too well to be painting in the winter, uh, but we have to do it. It is possible that I would have waited until uh, further in the spring to do a task like this, but on the other side I'm actually really happy that we have the added pressure uh, from the yard, because uh, then it's done and I think uh, we, we will be able to do it. Uh, also now just with a little more consideration and heaters and things like that, but it's really good to get the push Good morning, Aladino. Good morning. What do you think? Uh, first coat is on and I'm pretty pleased. It went on pretty well. It's often the case when you put paint right onto the perfectly sanded substrate. Um, temperature wise, it worked uh, well also. Uh, that's what I was mostly concerned about. Uh, the surface being too cold, uh, making the paint sag and drip. But that didn't happen, so it looks uh, super good. Of course, dust settled into it, but we can't avoid that having heaters that literally blow air. But yeah, all in all, um, it looks super good. So we've been talking this morning about how to continue. We've got a few things to consider. Do you want to give us a quick review of all those? All those so things? yeah, we are a little pressured by the weather forecast. Uh, it's really going to change dramatically uh, into much colder temperatures soon. So we were debating uh, when to put on the second coat. Um, today is very windy though in the forecast and windy is not good for a couple of reasons. Um, it doesn't allow us to get uh, the shed as hot because there's just too much air circulation. Uh, of course, more dust uh, can settle and also in very high wind the solvents inside the paint can evaporate quicker because they're kind of sucked and drawn away so your paint flowing characteristics also change uh, as you go 
Yeah, and just a quick note on that, because I know it seems we are inside, but I mean, the wind rips right through here. There's big gaps in the walls. Um, I know we've had some people be concerned about carbon monoxide. It's oh, like, yeah. trust me, no, no. <laughs> air, air no, comes it, right on through. Yeah, it wasn't built um, with that in mind. No. It does help to a very large degree. And uh, when it's calm, we can heat and it holds the heat. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it has its limitations. On the other side, though, because of the weather forecast that is going to be even worse, uh, we're debating maybe trying it today still because it doesn't seem to be blowing as hard yet. So I still turn on the heaters. Uh, we'll see how things are in an hour or two. If things warmed up in here a little bit, if the wind didn't increase too much, then I might just go ahead and do code number two. So in here is a project that I've been working on very much just in between moments um, when I'm not editing or when I'm not filming Aladino or helping Aladino or, or whatever, just basically when I've got a spare moment and I haven't really been filming it a lot. But as you do know, I did film the fact that I varnished the beams up here. Do you want to come up here, Dean? And. As you might also know, this was something that I really debated for a while whether or not I was going to do this because is it a necessary step to be floating to have to have varnished beams in here? No, of course not. But it just I think the the unfinishedness of the overhead compared with how lovely the finish is on everything else just didn't sit right with me. So I thought I'm going to do a quick job of this. I'm not going to spend too long on it um, because at some point, some sort of stain or something was added to these beams. And when I've been refinishing all the other wood on the boat, I really sanded all of that off and it takes a while to get off. But I did a few test pieces and I discovered that at least on the teak, whether I sand it off or leave it on, it doesn't actually make too much of a difference to the color of the wood once the varnish is applied. So. I thought, well, I'm just not going to sand too heavily. I did a really quick little scrub just to make sure, you know, it's not too smooth of a surface. And then I varnished and it looks pretty good. It looks all right. Totally. But there is one thing about it that I was sort of debating. And that is these beams aren't just solid teak. There's this teak part here. And then this is, I don't know, cedar or something. Or yeah, fir. Port Orford cedar. It's a Port Orford cedar. Um, and once sanded, this provides a really nice contrast. You can see it up here because Aladino did all the work on the hatch. And you can see this contrast where this has been sanded right down and you've got this yellow cedar with the dark teak. And it looks really, really nice. I think this also looks nice, but it requires so much more work to get to this. And in here, this is not really a room where you spend time or hang out or entertain guests, so I just didn't go for it. But I decided to go for it in the saloon. <laughs> nice. And I, I'm really happy. I think I'm glad I'm doing it here and not in there. I'll do it in the galley, too. Um, I think it's going to look really, really striking to have that contrast in the wood. And yes, it does take a while, but that's why I said I've just been doing it in, in between moments. Perfect. Um, the strategy I've been using is to use the Mirka Orbital Sander to, do mo to get most of it off because that's just the most efficient sander we have. It makes it so easy. But of course, with a round orbital sander, you can't get into the corners. So then I've been using the quarter sheet sander to get most of it off and then using the fine multi-tool just for the very very last little touch-ups because I find for whatever reason this really clogs up so quickly 
and become like the sandpaper becomes unusable. I don't know if it's the speed. It seems to generate a lot of heat, but for whatever reason, this clogs almost. Well, imagine heat. on the orbital sander, it's a big surface, and yeah. as it rotates, you use all of that surface yeah. to remove material. The oscillating multi-tool, you use the very tip yeah. mostly, and it just vibrates back and forth a millimeter. Yeah. So it just gets clogged up immediately. And it gets hot. It, yeah. Yeah. I think also contributes to it. Totally. That's a uh, pressure which shouldn't be applied too much. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Anyway, so... But it's handy to get to places where you can't. Yeah. Yeah. So I think this is going to look quite striking. I think oh, it's yeah, it already nice does. Feature. And I think it's going to be extra nice because the plan is to um, take these doors and we're going to put Alaska yellow cedar in the center of them. Oh, for a nice that's going to be a good combo. So then you've got the teak and the cedar, the teak and the cedar, and also in the galley, you know, all the countertops, we've got the teak and the cedar. So we've yeah. got a theme ah. going on in the boat. Nice. There we go. Thinking. Given the time pressure placed on us by the yard, I really decided to focus my efforts on the exterior of the boat and help Aladino with everything happening out there. So you might be wondering why I'm also still working on the beams interior. It's just because, you know, with the exterior tasks that we have right now, there's not really like full-time work for me out there. Uh, paint has to dry, Aladino is definitely the expert at applying the paint and so he just does it and then it dries and there's not much you can do in the interim. So I've been finding that I'm still continuing on some of the interior tasks and then just, you know, prioritizing the exterior whenever, whenever jobs arise. But I think that works out well. I, you know, certainly am happy to see such huge visual progress happening outside. I think I'm also grateful for the push from the yard because I know Aladino waits for perfection a lot of the time and, you know, I think this is a good thing that <laughs> we're still gonna get really good results, even though the conditions, not every single condition is absolutely ideal. I think we're making the absolute best of what we're given, and I'm really pleased. You did it, Dini. All right, so here it is. Uh, it's wow. the day after, and uh, paint is on, and uh, it looks pretty good. So I've decided today to actually start removing tapes uh, gingerly. Um, we're still not stepping on it uh, because uh, curing is just a little bit slower. I mean, you can touch it, but not putting too much stress on it yet. Uh, but yeah, it's all it's all white. Even though we haven't seen snow yet, it still is uh, white. <laughs> it looks really, really nice. Yeah, I'm pleased too. Yeah. No, given the circumstances, I'm really happy. And um, yeah, Maya filled up the tank, so we had a steady stream of propane. Couldn't do it without the heaters, uh, no, that's for sure. literally couldn't. Totally. But yesterday also was a little warmer than forecasted. The wind wasn't too bad after all, um, and I decided to go for it. Um, two coats on here. Mm -hmm. By the book, you would do three. By the book, three, but we had white primer underneath it which already covered pretty well so yeah we feel like um yeah we're we're leaving it um like this yeah um because yeah otherwise it would rec uh, it would require scotch briding at all temperatures are really going downhill uh, for the next week there's going to be a cold spell so yeah that would mean that uh, we could add a third coat in maybe a week or 10 days yeah. and uh, we don't want to take those it's kind of well, it's, it's kind of hard because so nicely like there's yeah. no aesthetic reason to add another coat so yeah. and these are really not hardware areas right mm -hmm. like the actual amount of paint is well, not that much like a lot of this is going to be the non-skin totally so anyway Happy it looks fantastic done. yeah thank you so we set out with a goal to mm -hmm. try and get the exterior finished as quickly as possible. Yeah. And I'm really happy with how well we've done on that. Totally. It's been uh, eight days or a week since. And since then, we've put on Kiwi Grip on the cabin top. We've painted uh, down here. We've done the barrier we've coat. We've done the barrier coat. But we're also extending tasks a little further now because, yeah, we might apply more barrier coat when we get our hands on some. Uh, we got to do more kiwi grip and we have to order more kiwi grip. So, yeah, there is more to do. Yeah. Yeah. But, but no, so far. Congrats, yeah. Dini. Thanks. Really congrats. Congrats to you, too. Thank you. 
So yeah, I think this time pressure is is a good one. It's not too long of a one. Um, I'm also cognizant of the fact that although we've sort of been given a month, give or take, it's not like we were given an actual day, just based on communication with the yard in the past and sort of the way I know things to be organized around here after spending several months in the boatyard, I would also say there's a very good chance that they're not ready to move us at the time that they said. I think they really want to apply pressure to everyone in the yard because there's a lot of projects in this yard that, um, yeah, like aren't progressing or just aren't really being worked on and are in the way. So I think they kind of apply a bit of that mentality to a lot of people here. Um, but yeah, I mean, we'll see how it goes. We have to be prepared to take the shed down in a month, but I'm also kind of like, I have a feeling a month is gonna come and then the yard's gonna forget they even asked us. You know, we'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, I think it's good to act like this is an actual fast deadline, but we'll, we'll see kind of how it plays out, I guess. And we'll just be prepared for whatever eventuality. Thank you so much for being here. An extra big thank you to our patrons for making all of these episodes possible. We are just getting closer and closer and closer to that finish line to a splash date. Everyone keeps asking us if we have a date. Of course we don't. I mean, we're probably not gonna know the date until honestly like a week before it happens. <laughs> we're not advanced planners. Um, no, <laughs> really not. Uh, but of course we'll let everyone on Patreon know all the real time stuff. That's sort of how we pay back the patrons for allowing us to keep this channel sponsor free. Um, we don't have to do, you know, take a 60 to 90 seconds out of our videos every week to talk about sponsors and that's directly because we get such incredible support from the audience, from people watching. Uh, you can support the channel for as little as $2 a month and get access to those weekly real-time updates. You know what's going on in real time. Really big thank you for being there with us on Patreon. And an extra big thank you to the folks whose names are now appearing on screen for always going the extra mile to make sure that Magic Carpet keeps being produced. As always, we'll see you next Friday.